Yesterday I did the dust collection for the miter saw and the belt grinder. I still don't have the switch in a case yet, so I thought I would do that today. First thing I'll do is I'll go over briefly and in simple terms how the thing works. Now there will be more detail in the website article and there will be a link to that in the description of this video. Basically the way this works is that this plugs into the wall, this one plugs into the saw, and this circuit is in between. And what it does is the electricity as it goes through the cord, it goes through this bridge rectifier here and it drops a little bit of voltage when it goes across here. That small amount of voltage is then amplified or stepped up with this transformer. The transformer sees that small voltage dropped by the bridge rectifier and amplifies it or steps it up to a higher voltage on the other side. The transformer is actually wired in reverse I've got the secondary on the bridge rectifier here. The primary, the one you would normally plug into the wall outlet, is on the other side that drives this relay. So that's in a nutshell. Like I say, there'll be a more detailed description of this in the website article, along with an actual circuit diagram naming all the parts and showing all the values. If you want to make one just like this. Now, I should mention that there is some risk involved with this project. Don't attempt it if you haven't done anything with mains voltage before. It can be quite dangerous. You can give yourself a nasty shock or even death could result. It's a possibility, especially if you're in a country or an area that uses 240 at the outlets. Here in Canada, in the United States, we have 120 on the outlets. It's not as lethal. I gave a lot of thought to what I could use for a case for this. The best material to use is plastic. So I've got four inch PVC pipe here and my circuit board, which is just a piece of perf board, will fit right in there. The pipe doesn't need to be that long, so I'm going to cut it off on my miter saw. To cover the ends, I'm just going to use normal PVC caps and I'm going to drill two 3 8 inch holes in one cap and one in the other. I've got the two caps I got on one of them the wire that will feed the vacuum coming out through. On the other one, I've got the two wires that go from the wall receptacle to the saw. I've also got these little strain relief things that I made from PVC pipe. And what they'll do is they'll clamp onto the wire to keep them from pulling out. I've got that end done. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect that to the board. This is in and out to the saw. So that uses these two terminals here on my board. Then I can put the other wire through the pipe. I'm just going to stick that in there for now. And then I can connect that. And then all of the wires get tied together. Something else to point out is that the device itself is not grounded. It doesn't need it. It's just switching the hotline. And that's what you have to pay attention to, that you're running the hot wire in through this device right here and not the neutral. All of these plug-ins have grounds as well, and all of the grounds are connected together inside the device like this. That's because if you have a grounded device like a table saw, you want to be able to plug in a grounded cord and plug into that. If your cord is not grounded, then you won't have any grounding on your tool. Just for some insurance here, I'm going to wrap the electric tape around the wires and around the marette to keep it from coming loose. Now that everything's properly hooked up, I can put it inside the pipe. Just need to crush it down a little bit and make sure all the wires are tucked in. Although there's little chance of the board moving around inside because of the wires that are in there packed around it. I'm going to put some heavy dabs of hot milk glue in there anyway, just to make sure that it doesn't. Okay, so here is the device. The real test comes when you plug it into the outlet that it doesn't blow up immediately. Do that and get that out of the way. Everything's good. Now this end, 
I deliberately made these two wires come out the same end so I wouldn't get confused. This one will go to the miter saw and the belt sander or grinder. So I'm going to plug in the splitter. Then I'm going to plug in the belt grinder. And then the miter saw will plug into the splitter as well. Okay, the vacuum gets plugged in to this one. Well, it doesn't come on. Now it should come on when I start the saw. It goes off again. And a lot of people asking me about adding uh, some sort of a, you know, a, a timer to it so that it would continue to run. It's very tricky, very difficult with this circuit. Almost impossible, I would say. I can't think of a way. I could do it with a different circuit, but it would involve more parts. It would have to have a separate small power supply that would really complicate it. And I don't think it's needed because... If you're using the saw and you want this, the vacuum to run a bit longer, just leave the saw on for a second after you've made your cut. And that way it'll clear the dust. It adds maybe a little bit of time to your thing, but if you're just making rapid little sh chops anyway, it's not going to make much of a difference. I've got the belt grinder plugged into that splitter as well, so the vacuum should come on when I turn this on as well. And it does. Excellent. So there it is all tucked away inside neatly. I made a little bit of a divider here that I just screwed on to the top of the stand to push everything over so that it doesn't interfere with the belt grinder as it swings up and down. Speaking of which, I didn't really give this a lot of room between it and the cabinet above. Look, it just clears.